everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I've got the cutest project for you guys today. This is an in the hoop pot holder that is from Designs by Juju. In the hoop means you're going to get a finished project that you can take out and it might be a wallet, it might be a wall hanging, and in this case it's pot holders. And this is just so precious. This is an old 10 inch square bundle that I had from Kimberbell. We whisk you a Merry Christmas and it's by Maywood Studios. I've had this for over a year. I don't know if they still make it anymore, but you can use any kind of fabric you want. And I'm making these with the Christmas, but I'll certainly make more for all the other holidays as well. I'll, you know, I could, we could do this in pumpkins. You could do this with stars and stripes for the 4th of July, and I just think it, this is just precious. So let me show you close up what this looks like. You have a front piece, and it gets bordered by four other pieces, and then the back uses an envelope-style backing, and that means there has a flap. Now, I have permanently closed mine with iron-in stitch witchery and so it's like one big piece and it's great and then it comes with uh, you can optionally put a little hanging tab if you want with some ribbon so let me show you what you need to make this project to make this project you're going to need one piece of center fabric for the front that's an eight by eight you're going to need two pieces that are two by eight you're going to need two pieces that are two by nine and a half. You're going to need one piece of either Insole Bright or Wrap and Zap, something like that, that is a heat insulator, and it's nine by nine. You're going to need two pieces of fabric for the back. They are seven by nine, and one of them is folded in half, right, uh, wrong sides together, like that. And then you're going to need a firm cutting surface and you're going to need tape and some curved embroidery scissors and either quarter inch or half inch wide grow gain ribbon for your little hanging loop. You're also going to want a trash can. I highly recommend you print out the instructions and you can follow along step by step. I am going to use one single thread color throughout the entire project. I used red all throughout every single step because red was going to be, if you notice on here, red was going to be my color for the overall stitching. The, none of the other thread shows at all. So you really can get away with just using one thread color. Now a little bit different with this particular project is there's no stabilizer involved at all. And all you're going to do is hoop a piece of batting. You can use any kind of quilt batting that you want. It can be the cotton kind. It can be the polyester kind. It just needs to be kind of a low loft batting. I don't think you want super puffy uh, pot holders, although you might. That's fine too. And you're going to want to hoop your batting fairly taut. If your batting has a droop to it in the hoop, let me get the hoop and show you what I mean. I'm going to be using my multi-needle machine to make this, but I'm only using one color, so it's just like a single needle machine, and you can do that. My single needle's in the shop. She needs a little love, but you can see this is fairly taut, okay? There's no droop on the bottom of this project. You don't want that. You want to make sure it's fairly taut. You don't want to tear a hole in it. This is a Hobbs 8020 scrap that I have. This is a great use of scrap batting as well. But because you're going to be actually taping things on the bottom, you want to make sure it's got a fairly stable place that you can put that insole bright on the bottom of your hoop and you're going to tape it on there. You don't want it to get caught on anything or fold it up, okay? So this is a fairly quick stitch out. It only takes 13 sewing minutes and so within about 20-25 minutes you're going to have a pot holder. These are great little gifts and I think you're going to have a lot of fun making them, okay? Let's get started. The very first stitch is going to stitch out a placement line and it's going to identify your sides as A, B, C, and D. You're going to stitch directly onto the batting.
The next step, we're going to take the background fabric and you want to, if your fabric is directional, the little tab right up here, the hanging tab is going to go up here. So think about how you would want your uh, fabric to be facing. So I'm, I want my bib to be straight up. I want the little bib on the fabric to be straight up. You want to make sure that your fabric is covering the edges by about half an inch all the way around. And you want to tape this down. Okay, so you want to tape down your fabric. You don't want to pull it uh, too taut, but you want it to be firm. I'm going to set it right over here. You just want to smooth the fabric so that it doesn't go anywhere. And then put your hoop back in. This particular hoop, it doesn't matter which way you put it in. So I wrote front on my batting edge, and that way I'm pretty sure I won't mess this up. <laughs> All right, now the tack down stitches for the center. I taped mine about a quarter of an inch in on this side. Now that the tack down stitches have gone all the way around the, uh, the top fabric, you want to remove the hoop and peel off all the tape and then trim around the fabric as close to the stitching as possible. You can use a duck bill or a regular curved embroidery scissors. I'll link to all of these products below. And you don't, again, you don't want to tug this, you just want to trim it real close. And it's always best to do it on a firm surface, a firm hard surface, not like, so this thing has two sides that you can press on one side and cut on the other, and I'm using the cutting side. Like my, my stash and my <laughs> scraps, <laughs> projects in the works, lots and lots of projects in the works. Once you've put your hoop back in the machine, it's now time for the all over quilting. time to put on the border fabrics and what you want to do is take one of your two by eight pieces and you want to align the top edge of the fabric with the top edge of base. So I'm going to put it just like that. It's, you make it so that you can still see your little uh, letter A. You want to tape this down so that it doesn't go anywhere. And when you tape it, Tape it uh, down here where it's easy to get it off and the needle won't go through the tape because it's going to stitch up here. Okay, now you want to remove the tape and you want to fold it back. If you need to remove the hoop, you can and kind of finger press it back so that it is nice and flat. After you have it finger pressed back, you want to tape it close to the outside of the hoop 
so that as it stitches, it's not going to go through the tape. You're going to do the same thing now for side B. Now you want to remove the hoop from the machine and we're going to remove the tape and you want to trim off these little flaps right here even with this stitching line on both ends. Okay, now we're going to repeat the same process for sides C and D. I'm going to go ahead and place D here while I'm at it. Okay, put this back in the machine. Now it's going to do an all over outside border stitch. We are on step 12. All right, now it's going to stitch the little placement line for your ribbon if you wanted to put a little hanging loop on there. So now what you want to do is take some tape, you're going to put your ribbon together, raw edges, raw ends together, fold it in half, take some tape and hold those together and place it about a half an inch outside of where those placement stitches are. And then you want to take another piece of tape and you want to tape down the loop so that it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. I am going to take a piece of tape. This is lesson learned, you guys. This stitch right here, it's going to come across right here and it, your foot can catch on that. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape there and now it should not pull up on that. Now it's going to stitch down 
the loop. Okay, the next stitch is going to stitch on the insole bright onto the back. So you want to remove the hoop from the machine. And what you want to do, it doesn't matter which side of this goes whichever way, okay? So cover everything, all of your stitches. I'm going to put it like that. And then you want to take tape and tape all four edges. Put it out here like a quarter of an inch so that your hopefully your needle won't go through your edge. Pull it taut without stretching. It's okay to tape onto the frame. If anything, it's better, it holds better. This is a better safe than sorry thing. You do not want this insole bright to get folded up up inside on the back, especially if you're not using a multi-needle and you have a flatbed machine. You want that insole bright as, the, as it moves around, you don't want anything catching. There we go. And put the hoop back in the machine. We are on step 15, and this is just to stitch down the insole bright. Okay, remove the hoop from the machine. Now you want to remove as much tape as possible from the front. Don't trim your fabric yet. You're just removing all the tape. Leave this one taped down on the bottom of the loop, but you can remove the rest of this tape. I don't know if you guys noticed, if you could see, but if this had not been taped right here, the foot would have caught up under that and uh, pulled it and ruined the project. I did that last night, so I learned my lesson, and I'm sharing with you guys so you don't have to go through that. Okay, now that the tape's all removed, flip the hoop over, and you want to remove all your tape and trim your insole bright all the way down to the stitches. If you accidentally tear a hole in your batting, tape it up. It'll be fine. You're going to eventually cut it all away anyway. You want to flip your hoop back over to the front. And wherever the top is, you're going to lay your top fabric with your fold to the center. This is the piece that, these, this is one of the seven by nine pieces that you had folded in half. And you're going to lay the top fabric even with the edge up here. All right, and I'm going to tape it so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. And then the bottom fabric, you want to place the bottom, the bottom part of that face down. So this is the folded piece with the fold toward the middle. And then this piece is face down like this. And just cover, you want to cover this by like an inch and a half. That's all you need to do. It's okay to leave this edge raw. If you are not going to permanently close the backing like I do with, uh, with stitch witchery, you can fold this down and run a stitch line right there if you wanted to for a clean edge. And I'm going to tape this down. I'm actually gonna put another two pieces of tape against the very edge of the fabric and attach it to the hoop so that it doesn't get any bubbles. 
Just slide it and attach it to the very edge like that. All right, I'm feeling better about that. Put it back in the hoop and do the last stitch. All right, all done. Remove the hoop from the machine. And you wanna take this out of the hoop. Ooh, y'all, we went through some tape. <laughs> That's all right. First thing you want to do is get your scissors, flip it over, and you want to trim away the batting from the back from the project first. You don't want that batting in your quarter inch seam allowance when you trim the fabrics. So trim this first. I'm going to get in there as close as I can. That insole bright can be a little bulky. Now we're going to take it over to the cutting table and we're going to trim a quarter of an inch away all the way around the outside. I'm just going to put my quilting ruler on here and trim this up. Now I'm going to cut these at a 45. It just gets rid of the bulk in the corners. You. I cut maybe, oh, about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching. Now these corners are rounded, which makes them really nice, so they do pop out nice. And then the first thing you do is flip the bottom half first, and poke those corners out. Very nice. Okay. And then we're going to flip the top one. All right. Oh, that came out so cute. Oh my goodness, that's precious. <laughs> I love it. Very cute. Okay, I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and uh, iron this out just a little bit. I don't want to see the brown fabric from the front. So I'm going to roll it just a little. Oh, this came out just too cute. This is a great little pattern. Now, if you don't like how the insole bright crinkles, uh, once they're washed, it kind of goes away. That looks adorable, absolutely adorable. Now, what I do to make mine sealed permanently, let me flatten this out. is I use a product called Stitch Witchery. I'll link to it below, and it is permanent. I don't want this opening up and fraying or anything like that. So I'm gonna take a piece of Stitch Witchery. I'm just gonna cut it to length. This is a half inch width of Stitch Witchery. And I'm just gonna slip it right up inside so that you don't get any of the glue. You can't see the glue from the outside. You don't want that on your iron, that's not fun. There, that's good. And a good 10 seconds of steam. This is the Sapporo 527 Gravity Fed Iron. I have had this thing for five years and it is wonderful. It never spits on your fabric because the steam actually happens in here. There's no water inside of the iron. Love it. All right, that's done. It's completed. I'm gonna let it cool for just a second. Look at that, that's on, permanent. Oh, that turned out adorable, look at that. So these just turned out so cute, look. Oh, this is the focus fabric from that layer cake, that 10 inch set of 10 inch squares. I put brown on the back of this one and gray on the back of this one in the tossed. And I just think these turned out precious. These are so fast, such a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.